This is a call from October 26, 2013. Internal reference 145223. It's to go ahead and play it. So in this call, you tell, let them know I said, if you don't give him no money, I'm putting you back here with me. Correct? Uh huh. That a threat of extortion, correct? Yes. You later on tell to tell people that's not. I'm sorry. You later on tell to tell people that you got the juice, right? Yeah. Juice is power, right? Yes. You can make things happen from jail, right? No, meaning I can make them do what I want them to do. You got the juice. Right? Right. That's what you said. It says you got the rank. Right. What does that mean? Meaning as though they know what they did, and I know. If I give it up, your ass is going to be in here. Finally, you say you got power. Right? Didn't I just tell you what that means? I just told you that. You said you're going to make my power last. Right? I say, I know my power ain't going to last long. I know when it runs out, it's out. Is it out right now? Yeah, it's out. Let's jump to another topic of conversation here. That is your expectation, sir. Your expectation from doing this, from testifying today. Sir, isn't it true that you've told many people in dozens, if not hundreds of calls over the last three and a half years, that while you haven't officially been promised anything, your expectation is that you're going to get out of jail for all that you've done in 15 years? That's what I hope. I hope I'll go home after I get finished testifying. Well, it's more than a hope. It's an expectation, isn't it, Mr. Franklin? Yeah. It's an understanding you have based on all the meetings you've had with the federal government, correct? Say it again. It's an understanding that expectation is based upon all of your meetings and communications with Team USA, correct? No. On the information, you can say that. I'm sorry? I said the information. The information you're giving them? Yes. So your expectation is, in exchange for that information, you're going to go home in 15 years, right? I hope to go home in 15 years. In order to go home in 15 years, the judge who had your case, who is Judge Duvall, correct? Yes. Judge Duvall either has retired or is about to retire, and you've been talking about that, right? Yes. So, in order for you to get your time cut from a life sentence, I think it's life plus something, right? No, I have life. Two life sentences running concurrent. In order for that to happen, for that life sentence or two life sentences to run concurrently to get converted into 15 years, you've already served three and a half years, right? Yeah. So you'd be looking at getting home in about 11 years from now, right? About that. These guys, the government, they've got to write a Rule 35 motion, right, to your sentencing judge, right? Right. They've got to tell him, they've got to make the motion that, Judge, I know you sentenced Mr. Franklin to two consecutive life sentences. Concurrent, concurrent, concurrent sentences. But that needs to be cut down to 15 years. That's the way it has to happen, right? If it was to happen, yes. Because without them writing that request, writing that motion, Judge Duvall, or whoever succeeds Judge Duvall in your sentencing judge, can't effectuate the time cut, right? Well, the judge ain't got to do it no way. No, but he can't do it unless they write the letter. That's my point, right? Right. That has to happen, right, sir? Right. So, all this work you're doing here today is in exchange for them writing that motion to Judge Duvall to get your time cut, right? Well... It's in exchange for hoping that they're going to write it and they're going to do it, that the judge will do it. Let's play tab 134. It's a recorded phone call from Don't Play It Yet. 
from September 23rd, 2015. It's phone number 504-410. Do you have a time or no? I think it's 1230 in the afternoon. Who are you talking to, sir? My friend. What's his name? D. This call was after this indictment came out, right? Yes. You're telling D, look, man, I'm going to be home in 10 years, right? I say if. I don't think you said if. I think you said your expectation is, since you have the juice, you're going to be home in 10 years, correct? You can play it again. I recall saying if. I think the jury heard it. I say, if they give me 15 years, I'll have 10 more to do and I'll be home. You're expressing an expectation that you're going to get 15, right? Hoping to get 15. I'll say they. I'll say my lawyer said 17. I said, I don't want no 17. I want 10. I want to go home. This hope that you have, have you expressed it to Mr. Rainier? or Mr. Landrew, or Mr. Ollinger, or Mr. Wood? Well, anytime you talk to somebody about some time with them, they're going to tell you we can't discuss that. But you've told them what you expect, right? I told them I want to go home. You've told them an appropriate number to put in a motion they write to Judge Duvall, right? Number of years? No, I told them that I hope you don't mess me over. You've told your lawyer, Mr. Jordan, and before Mr. Jordan, Mr. Tessier, to make it very clear what Daryl's expectation is. You're not serving more than 15, right? It ain't about what I want. It's about what they're going to do. I can't call no shots. But that's not my question. Counsel, let him finish. Let him finish. Were you finished? It's not about what I want. It's about what they're going to do me. It's what I would like to have and want to have, but it ain't going to go that way. It's up to them. You've told your lawyers, Mr. Jordan and Mr. Tezier, to make it very clear to Mr. Landrew and Mr. Rainier and the rest, you want to go home with no more than 15 years, right? I didn't tell them that. I could tell them myself. What I need them to do it for. They just have to me, and I could tell them myself. You have told them yourself, right? Yeah, I want to go home. I want to see some graduation. You've told them many times, right? No, because any time you get on that subject, the first thing they'll say, we can't talk about that. We all know the government can't officially promise you anything. Let's play a tab. Tab 159. This is a clip from after your guilty plea. It's from November 7, 2013. It's going to phone number 504 931. Internal references 114748. Judge, I would object. His plea wasn't until January 2014. That was a misstatement. No, his plea agreement and his factual basis were signed October 25th, 2013. That is correct, but they weren't taken by a judge until January 2014. All right, that's fine. So signed one date, but he didn't actually go to court until another date. Correct. But it was after the date that he had signed the plea agreement. And after, you said you told the government everything, except for Calvin Celestine and the driver, about the guy in the 8th War, right? Uh-huh. So, at the end, what you tell your baby mama is that the government promised to give you the lightest sentence they possibly can. That's your quote, right, Mr. Franklin? That wasn't... Yeah, that was my quote. That was your quote. Well, who was that? That was a girl. Were you lying to her? Yeah, I tell her that to make her stick around. You think I'm going to let them... I got to make them think I'm coming home real soon for them to stick around. It's just some random girl? Uh Uh-huh. What you said to some random girl specifically is, is to make you sound credible in front of this jury, you can't be promised anything, right? That's true. No specific number of years. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. But they have promised you to give you the lightest sentence they can possibly come up with, right? 
I told you. I told her a lie. No, they never told me no lie to sentence. So you're lying to a nameless girl, right? Yes. That's not important, correct? Not really. You are not going to lie to this jury, are you? No. You're not going to lie to this judge, are you? No. You just lie to nameless girls, right? Yeah.